Hey, what's going on guys? Jay Cloud here, and I know, I know, it's been a while since you guys saw a video from me. Been busy with work and also been doing some collabs with the guys over at Anime Balls Deep. A collaboration of Wild Black Clover Theories, if you guys have missed those videos, go check it out. Also been involved in some podcasting and live streams, so sorry I have not been catering to you guys on this channel. So yeah, it has been a while. It's also been a while for me to tell you guys to subscribe to the channel with notification bells on and leave a like on the video because we're back with some more Jujitsu Kaisen content on the channel to review the latest chapter because this fight between Kajimo and Hakuri has been amazing so far, so let's get into it. The chapter starts off with Hakuri activating his domain expansion and we get some information on the way it operates. Hakuri guaranteed hit in his domain expansion is actually harmless, but the activation of it is really fast. So despite the crazy hacks that Hakuri has in his domain expansion, his guaranteed hit in his domain is harmless where Gojo, he used his domain expansion, it's an instant kill. Mahito is another example for that. But speaking of Mahito, we also find out in this chapter that Hakuri's activation of his domain expansion is fast than that of Mahito's and Shibuya which is 0.2 seconds so I guess Hakuri's domain expansion is 0.1 or an instant which is absolutely insane. When Hakuri's domain expansion is activated it also forced the rules upon his opponents which is the same thing he did in his fight against Charles when information was forced to him about idle death gamble. We also find out that Hakuri's domain expansion was so fast to the point where Kashimo didn't have time to activate Hollow Wicker Basket which is a anti-domain expansion counter. A technique that we saw Reggie perform that neutralized the guarantee hit. But since Hakuri's domain expansion is so fast, it was too late because by the time he activated, the rules of Hakuri's domain expansion was upon Kajimo. So it was already way too late for Kajimo to activate anything by the time he used his domain expansion. So with all the information that was sent to Kajimo, he starts to smile because he realizes how exactly Hakuri's domain expansion works. Which is why he stated he's likely to hit the jackpot next, which is Hakari's increased probability. Which makes perfect sense because the way that Hakuri's domain expansion works, once he hits the jackpot, he can either go to routes the probability change or time reduction. Which if he were to go the time reduction part, he will also have two routes to there. He will either go back to jackpot or back to a normal state. But as you can see, going the probability change route, it always lead back to jackpot. That's the only route it can go back to. But that is the risk and the metaphor of gambling when it comes to Hakuri's domain expansion. Which is why in this chapter, we also get a visual description showing us that increased probability only goes back to jackpot. And not to confuse anyone, increased probability is the official viz term of probability change. It's the exact same thing. But with all this information about Hakuri's domain expansion, you can see that it comes with risk, especially fighting someone strong like Hajimo. Which is why I love Hakuri's dialogue right here where he says, a life of gambling always comes with risk. Which is very true. Now as the fight continues on, I think it's clear as day that based on the hand-to-hand -hand combat skills, Kajimo is superior. However, his superiority in hand-to-hand -hand combat doesn't mean anything when it comes to Hakuri's insane hacks abilities. Because after getting all that damage from Kashimo, he's able to restart the entire sequence by using a pseudo spin, which is something new because he didn't use this against Charles when he was fighting him. He only used the balls and the doors, which makes sense because like I stated earlier, Kashimo is clearly superior when it comes to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat. He is overwhelming Hakuri, so it makes sense that he would have to use pseudo spin against Kashimo because it works better. He didn't need to use that against Charles. Using the balls and the doors probably would have have no effect against someone like Hashimo. So pseudo spin was the way to go, especially since Hakuri is in this probability change mode, aka increased probability, because we find out in this chapter that using pseudo spin without being in probability change mode, there's a risk of it being a dud. So that means that if Hakuri was able to use the pseudo spin without being in the probability change mode, there is a high chance he won't be able to repeat the sequence. So this is a good strategy for Hakuri to use against Kashimo because not only that he's repeating the sequence, Sequence, but this is stalling time for him to get to reach which increases the chances of reaching the jackpot. But now that Hakuri has progressed to reach, this is where we get the sequence of scenarios of one of the characters. One of the characters is on a train and once it reached a station without anything happening, this is when Hakuri can reach a jackpot. And while the fight is continuing on, the sequence finally reaches in where the character gets to the next station which allows Hakuri to reach a jackpot now that he can be in this immortal state. With unlimited curse and Energy. He's practically Gojo in this state because Gojo, we know he never runs out of cursed energy, but it also reminds me of Yuta, where Yuta can be in this overpowered state with high cursed energy increased for five minutes. Where Hakuri, he can be in this overwhelming, overpowered state with unlimited cursed energy, but that's only for four minutes and 11 seconds. Which now we gotta look at Yuta's words a little different when he said, when Hakuri gets serious, he is stronger than him. Even though Maki said that's not true, but it shows that Yuta sees Hakuri in a high 
high regard because these are two characters that have the potential to surpass Gojo. Now Hakuri in this immortal state having unlimited curse energy, he also has a automatic reverse curse technique as well. But Kajimo on the other hand, he's enjoying this, he's loving the moment, he sees this as a challenge to test himself against someone like Hakuri to beat someone that's immortal. And Kajimo, he wants all the smoke, he's like, you know what Hakuri, turn up the music, let's go, get ready for your funeral and I love this trash talk here and this paneling. Kajimo is not waiting for the time to run out, he wants to beat Hakuri in this 4 minutes and 11 second state because he wants to beat someone immortal because he views himself as defeating Sukuna, he wants to challenge Sukuna. This man has a obsession to fight Sukuna even 400 years in the past which we see in this flashback. And even in this flashback where we see in this panel shot, we see all these bodies around which lets me know that Kashimo has an obsession to fight the strong, to challenge himself and test himself against strong wielded people like that's his desire and purpose to live because if he doesn't get that, he's not going to be satisfied with his life. And that's definitely the vibe I got from him in this flashback because we see Kenjaku with him which it lets us know that this is during the time when he made the contract to be resurrected for the calling games. After Kenjaku saw all the bodies around Kashimo, he asked, did you have fun? Kajimo said not at all, I should have challenged you back then. So it seems as though Kajimo and Kenjaku were tight with each other and probably not the best of friends of course, but they know each other and Kenjaku knows that Kajimo is a battle hungry guy. I also like in this flashback that we get to see Ishigori, who is known to have the greatest curse energy output in history of that time and being a true canon, which I love that we know that he was also around 400 years in the past as well. Kashimo seemed as though he wanted to fight him as well during that time, but he felt as though it was way too far and there is no time left, coughing up blood, letting us know that these are his final moments in his life before the reincarnation. Before his dying moments, he then asks Kenjaku who is the strongest sorcerer that you know. And he said Sukuna, but that was only 600 years ago. But this is rather odd because I know a lot of people have been talking about that the fact that Kenjaku was defeated by two anomalies from the Gojo clan and didn't even refer to someone that had both the six eyes and the limitless curse technique as the strongest but he said 20 finger Sukuna is but it's possible that these past users of the six eyes were not as strong as Gojo and Gojo is just built different or we're probably just really underestimating Sukuna and how strong Sukuna really is at full power. But after hearing this information and knowing that Sukuna will also be resurrected in the future in the calling games, Kajimo wants to make this challenge which we see it end off in the chapter which we see his appearance how he looked before he died as well. Overall, I think this was a solid chapter, but the thing that makes me wonder why isn't Kashimo using his own domain expansion? Because I believe he has one, and if he does, it could be a handicap situation that he put on himself to see can he beat someone like Hakuri that's immortal without using domain expansion to see and test himself once he gets to Sukuna eventually. But those are my thoughts on that. You guys comment below and tell me what you think about this and how you feel about this chapter. Also, leave a like on this video, subscribe if you want to see more Jujutsu guys and content on the channel check out my other anime and manga content you guys have an awesome life take care of yourselves stay blessed and i'm out